Hi, my name is Steve DiPaolo. I run a research lab here at Simon Fraser University. Um, I've always been a bit of an artist and a scientist. Somewhere I was starting to be able to put the two together. It turns out computers got to a level where it was possible to think about modeling creativity. Some people aren't happy with the notion that AI can be creative or they don't understand what it means. And it is true that it isn't really creative. Somebody's writing code to put creativity in a box uh, that then you could poke at and that's creative. I would call that almost like interactive narrative, that you're setting up a creative space and then that space kind of lives on its own, so to speak, and can be affected by other people and something new emerging happens. But to say that the AI came up with it itself probably is less true. So there's a group of people now actually looking at artificial intelligence to express creativity. Most of it is what you would say is an assistant. It's there just to kind of assist you. Um, we do that as well, but we also look at uh, where it's doing some of the creativity for you. There's different kinds of layers of the AI process. So the first layer is we can separate the background from the foreground. In Photoshop or a program like that, it would go right across. It wouldn't have a distinction between this very important thing called a person and the background. We're able to segment out the background, and then we have knowledge, which is the great thing about AI, about what a face is. So we, we do more to the eyes and the mouth, and we look at the history of painting and how you paint shapes and faces, and we put that in. Lastly, we actually think about stroking separately, and that can get us these great uh, edges and strokes that you see here. So there's a number of techniques that we use. Uh, we don't use just one AI technique. One is called a genetic or evolutionary program. That's like, uh, just like we grew to be creative. You actually take a program and grow that to be creative. So kind of this work here shows that where I used this very famous portrait of Darwin. So we came up with this way of evolving these creative uh, beings in the case of computer programs. This was a major piece for us. It got into major museums all over the world, so people didn't always realize, but thousands of people were looking at computer-made art using this evolutionary technique. So the other major one is neural networks, or deep learning. And neural networks are, are basically trying to emulate this creative brain we have by having several layers that you understand different things at each layer. We just don't go up and label, we go up and then generate back down. And it's in the generation, that's what creativity is. And as you do so, we literally with our deep learning hallucinate in a way. We have the system kind of go off in a way. Sometimes we go off towards Van Gogh or towards Picasso, and that's what you're seeing in these images. Creativity in general is journeys through decision search spaces that come up with something that's novel of worth. There's a lot of things that could be of worth, but there are some magical things. And sometimes, well, there's, there's an artist and a director of musicians that somehow is just able to do it. That's what we're trying to infuse in our computer systems. We hope it's gonna open up possibilities that go well beyond, you know, 2D and 3D and video. We sometimes talk about an AI system that as you're creating, there's almost boxes all around of all the other possible directions you can go. And just seeing them peripherally will make you stay open and creative. I don't think AI should make the creative decisions. I think the AI should be there to get people thinking out of the box. So it's always about humans, but the AI just keeps it open. So that's what we're after here in our lab.